Hey guys, this is Michael Oral from MobileBurn.com here. Today we're going to do something that's a little bit different. You're going to get to look through my personal collection of phones now, since I've been running Mobile Burn for about 11 years now, and uh, I had some pretty cool stuff even before then. You can expect to find some neat stuff you're going to want to see. Today's video is brought to you by Tiny Galaxy, which is a new YouTube network that uh, we've teamed up with. Tiny Galaxy brings you mobile tech and gaming news, reviews, tips, real good in-depth stuff like that. If you're interested in checking out some of the videos, uh, click through the link up here in the corner. And if you yourself have a really cool channel and you think you might want to team up with Tiny Galaxy and make a few extra bucks in the process, uh, click through again to this link and you'll find information on how to do that. So, let's get to the phones. So first up, I'm going to show you the Ericsson R520, sometimes known as the R520M. I've got two of them right here. This is actually a prototype. The device was announced in the year 2000, and I got this before it came out of the market. And I paid thousands for it, I'll let you know. Um, very cool device. Uh, this is the standard model, production model. Uh, and you can see the difference on the back. If I flip them over, this one has a uh, prototype labeling sticker. I have no uh, batteries for either of the devices because none of the devices from back you know, 10 plus years uh, have working batteries. A lot of the batteries start to bulge and they can damage the phones. Uh, this is the standard antenna, uh, just a stub antenna. This one, on the other hand, is a whip antenna. You can see how it extends into the battery compartment here. Uh, the battery actually had a notch out for it in order to allow for the extended whip antenna. Infrared port, uh, but the main thing that was uh, big about this phone is it was the very first GPRS device on the market that also had uh, Bluetooth capability, so you could use it with uh, Bluetooth devices. So naturally, when I picked up the R520 prototype, I also picked up Ericsson's HBH10, the very first Bluetooth headset on the market. You can see uh, it kind of looks like a Klingon spaceship sitting in the uh, charging dock right here. pops out. So there's no uh, charging points right there. Pretty, uh, pretty cool design. Flexes here. And that's how it gives space for your ear inside there. Volume controls and it's a push button as well. Uh, LED it flashes green. Um, it actually was shown in the Lara Croft movie. The first one um, it was flashing blue, but that was just for the movie. Then you see the charging base here, and it still uses a uh, fairly regular Ericsson charger um, that was available you know, only a couple of years ago. Big, gangly, um, but it worked, and it was the only thing around at the time. But of course, if you wanted to be that guy walking around with the headset when nobody knew what they were, you needed this little leather case here that clipped onto your belt so you could have the HPH 10 with you at all times. Next up from the year 2001, this is a MagCom communicator. Um, very cool device out of Scandinavia. Um, fully magnesium body and had a really large uh, grayscale dis display. Um, might have only been a couple of shades of gray, like maybe four or something like that, but it was pretty limited, but it was a large display and you didn't find things like that back, back in the day. Um, very rugged phone, but uh, not the greatest build quality. You can see the, uh, the hinges loose and everything like that, and this happened a long, long time ago, so it's not something that deteriorated over time. Um, rough finishes and everything, and uh, the company ran into a lot of financial trouble and didn't actually managed to get many of these out on the market. So when I picked up one, um, they threw in just about every accessory they had ever made for the thing, including this case, you know, with the swivel um, belt holder and everything like that, and a number of other things at the time. But still, it was a pretty cool pre piece of kit back in the day. Also from 2001, this is Nokia's 9210 communicator. Um, very large device, uh, color display, uh, actually has a, a 640 by 200 pixel display, I believe it is. Um, you see the soft buttons um, across the side, full query keyboard, shortcuts, and uh, of course, that's what's mandatory at the time. You still needed an external antenna. This one is uh, one of the cooler antennas that was ever out, so it was meant to be used in a couple of different configurations. You know, if you had it out like this, you'd have it sticking straight up here, and if you were talking on it, you would have it sticking up like that. Very, very large device. Um, again, not working. I tried charging this, uh, it just won't go. But uh, large, but hugely useful uh, since QWERTY really wasn't available on too many things back in the time. I was uh, living in Germany at the time. Uh, this does not work in North America. 
And um, I used it in when I was taking German lessons as a dictionary. It was fantastic, especially just for survival, trying to go around town. So again, a really, really cool device. Um, biggest brick out there, though. Um, huge. You could really hurt somebody with this, but very, very useful. And lastly, we're going to skip a few years ahead. Um, this is the Nokia 7710. Um, I guess you could consider it one of the first modern smartphones. This was announced in late 2004. Um, you could buy it in very early 2005. has a couple of features that would you know, still stand up today. It has a 3.5 inch display, which is pretty large, uh, 640 by uh, 320 pixels of resolution. Ran Simeon OS just like the 9210 I just showed you. Um, but completely different version. This was uh, what was called Series 90 back in the day. Um, there used to be Series 80, Series 90, and a couple other things, but before everything worked its way down to Series 60 alone. Uh, you can see, pretty large, but still had a, um, a whopping megapixel camera, which was uh, really hardcore back in the day. Also, you might have noticed um, stylus, because it was a resistive touchscreen, unlike uh, today's capacitive displays. Uh, but really fantastic. It was, it was really cool. Uh, did not do very well in the market. Um, very relatively few of them were made, um, but still, it was really cool back in the day. So in review, we've got uh, Ericsson's R520, the Nokia 9210, Nokia 7710, and the Magcom communicator. And of course, we also have Ericsson's uh, initial Bluetooth headset, the HBH10. Hope you enjoyed uh, looking through a small portion of my uh, personal collection of devices. Until next time, I'm Michael Orl from MobileBurn.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out Tiny Galaxy.